complain like an old codger. Uh, what what you can get away with TV now versus what you can get away with then? Who here was a Gargoyles fan? What? This, the episode where Broadway was playing with a gun. Oh, yeah. Yes! <laughs> so many people want to censor that, and yet it's a great Whoa. example and parable for kids. What about Batman and all the villains they had guns? But yeah, that, that Gargoyles episode won awards for teaching children gun safety, and they can no longer air it on TV. Or like the uh, wow. Tiny Toons episode with the drunk driving. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> that, one, that one felt a little weird. I mean, that was, oh, yeah, that was, was intentionally out of character. All right. But guys, thank you. Thank you for coming to a somewhat impromptu panel. We had a cancellation today, last minute, and so I thought, hey, I've got this. It's a fun thing to talk about, at least in my eyes. <laughs> so I said, here I am, unrefined, untested. I am totally vulnerable. Oh, hugs. Yay! <laughs> Uh, so this is pony personality types. Basically, here's the thing. People are diverse, they're unpredictable, but in some ways with the study you see consistencies. We all react in certain ways. Maybe there's only a finite number of ways you can react. But nevertheless, uh, people can be categorized, but that doesn't necessarily define people. It's one of the wonderful mix and matches. And sometimes the easiest way to explain ideas is to use Colorful examples. Check out the rainbow. Dash. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, this is one of the fun things and what I enjoy about this show. These characters are so strongly defined, so uh, lively, that people identify with them. We see part of ourselves in them. And that's because they really take the time to flesh these characters out, both for their strengths and their fallibilities. Which, I hate to break it to you guys, but there is no such thing as a perfect person. Nope. Not a oh, word, no. you. The only perfection is in Deep, no doubt. <laughs> That's These, why Cell died. <laughs> but you, th you think that'd be common knowledge, but sometimes people oh. just don't want to admit it. So, for, to begin this presentation, we begin what? with a test. Okay, no. Practically perfect. Practically, the key uh, word is practically. Uh, I never explain anything. Well, you're fired. What? <laughs> 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 Sir, if you could hit the button. My assistant, ladies and gentlemen, he hits the button. <laughs> the Myers-Briggs test. Who here has taken this? Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah. Some folks are a little too young. It, uh, might, it can be actually fascinating no, to learn. No, no. Yeah. Who not? I'm sorry? I'll just raise my hand for that one. Oh, there you go. Uh, so, yes, the Myers-Briggs test. It's meant to define a general sense of your personality. It's a long test, but it's also very insightful. I'll sort of define this is the next button, please. Not the red button. Like. Basically, after World War II, Catherine Cooks Briggs and her daughter Isabel Briggs Myers, they started researching this because there were a lot of people who were in pain. They'd seen horrible things. They needed to know uh, how to treat these people. And they realized that right now, at that point, psychology was sort of cookie cutter. It was one style supposed to fit all. And honestly, within this room alone, I'm sure there's at least a dozen different approaches one could take to talking to addressing issues or just getting conversations going. Ergo, it's pretty stupid to just treat people as one thing. It's really stupid! <laughs> but test is a poor term because test implies you can be right or wrong. Well, there is no wrong personality. There are people. People can do wrong things, but I think it's a mistake to say someone is a wrong, born wrong. So, well, I'm not, unfortunately, test is pretty much the only term I can think really applies. There's the Myers-Briggs study, there's the Myers-Briggs questionnaire. Oh, God, that put people to sleep right away. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to fill out a questionnaire? No! <laughs> <laughs> Take a survey. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that was the question. Two. Then they go, question two. Okay. Oh, I, oh, well, it, it was no! I failed your test. Your questionnaire is a question. Don't. <laughs> I, go to, I, go, I walked out of the 16th Street Mall and some guy says, Hey, I noticed you have a good chakra. Hey, you notice I got a good fist, too. <laughs> but so, test is a poor term. It's not right or wrong, but unfortunately, I can't think of a better word for it. But mostly, it, can, it breaks us down into choices. And, yes, sir? I was going to say an evaluation for it. Evaluation. Oh, but then that makes it sound like you're under judgment. See, this is. You can always use the term survey. So, well, yeah, that's kind of like questionnaire. Like, oh, yeah, I didn't take 
I take, I get a call at home. Hi, would you like to take, take a part in a survey? <laughs> <laughs> there is no good term. There is Census. no good term. Indeterminate yeah, color book. Oh, test I'm going to take that under advisement. <laughs> <laughs> the Myers Briggs coloring book. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's let's get the patent going on. Let's this. Get this right. <laughs> So, so we start off with the big term. I, I mentioned I'm a big fan of recognizing this difference: introvert and extrovert. Are you re-energized by some time alone with your thoughts to sort of sort yourself before you go out and meet with people, or are you energized by the group activity, the shared experience? Do you want to include as many people as possible uh, to get the most out of the moment? That's a very strong di uh, difference between people. And right away, that's an important way on how to address folks. Are you sensing or intuition? Yeah, there's, okay. This this is broken down by, uh, why am I, uh, suddenly you take the first letter Type syllable. Type feeling? Man, I'm, Horatio I, fell off the wheel. <laughs> yeah, honestly, it's actually represented as, it's the big picture, then the small details. Exactly. But uh, basically, when they when they come up with the names for each person's uh, personality type, they take the first letter of each word and arrange a nonsensical and impronounceable word. But hey, we already got introvert, so if you have intuition, we're gonna go with the intuition. So I guess I gotta pronounce it that way. Intuition. <laughs> but basically, sensing is sort of taking feel of the outside world, being aware of the situation, factoring those in. Or intuition, are you going with your gut? You're pulling up Stephen Colbert. Oh, sorry, that's Comedy Central. <laughs> Not allowed to say that anymore, because they're smart. Sorry. Are you thinking or feeling? Are you do you approach questions from an intellectual standpoint, going trying to process it up here, or do you or are you following more your emotional sense? And again, I know a lot of intellectuals will say, well, there's only one way in the mind, clearly. But, you know, so those guys don't get invited to parties very much. <laughs> no, I, again, I maintain there is no right or wrong, there's just different degrees. And so how much flexibility do you enjoy? Our, well, Jeopardy, then you just got to have a healthy sense of questions. Oh, and you also have to not be Sean Connery. <laughs> well, Trebek, I'm here to ruin your day. <laughs> oh, did the last button update? The there we go. And are you judging or perceiving? Do you, do you look and try and take in the situation? You try to factor in all that could be occurring at once? Or are you, you see a situation and you make a call right away? And again, it depends on the situation of who's really the best fit. But truthfully, the, I find that if you work in a vacuum of only one personality or one way of perceiving things, you're going to have a bad time. You're going to have a very bad time. And odds are, you're going to sabotage yourself. That's why it's good to surround yourself with diversity. <laughs> Abe Lincoln, one of our best, one of our most famous presidents, arguably one of the best, had a cabinet of Democrat and Republicans, different perspectives. I'm sure they argued into the night. Probably gave him a headache every day. But you maintain flexibility if you keep yourself open to opinions. So, what I've done is I've gone through each personality trait and, and try to find a pony that matches that, an example. Sometimes they're really good ponies, sometimes they're not so great. They're sometimes it's the villains. But again, it's not the personality type that makes them a villain, they've just made choices. You can see how perhaps they can represent a pitfall. So we start off with the ESTJ, so that is extrovert, sensing, thinking, judging. This is often known as the executive of this guy knows me, he's, he's keyed up. The executive, who sounds so commanding. So let's talk about the positive traits for this guy. The executive thrives on order and continuity. <laughs> Views the world very rationally and organized. Things need to fit, things need to be very well structured. Likes the rules. Just loves to follow the rules. They're there for a purpose, they're there to protect you. You step outside of those, you're probably inviting greater disaster. In fact, I believe that one of the heroes we saw from last night's Doctor Strange well fits this. And service is the key. You show your best by being in service to others. It's not about putting yourself first and foremost. It's about, it's about putting your best out there and, and people will hopefully recognize it. But for every strength, there is a weakness. That's our next slide. 
So basically, you throw in some chaos to someone who likes the rules, they're going to shut down. Discord. Oh, yeah. Discord would drive this person up a wall. Pretty <laughs> much. They'd probably just be sort of that stunned deer in the headlights look. <laughs> And of course, very judgmental. Now, when you, when you have a judgmental inclination, you can make very snap decisions. You're not overwhelmed in a crisis, but you can also jump to a conclusion very quickly and maybe miss a key factor. That's why, it's something, that's why I say it's good to have people who will push back and say, hang on, if you consider this. Uh, but also because you're a stickler for the rules, relaxation is pretty tough. It is not all that fun to just sit and do nothing. And that can lead to being perceived as very inflexible or stubborn. That can push people away. So that's the challenge to, sometimes you gotta learn to let go of the rules. To save the moment, you gotta break the rule just a little. And so the pony I've chosen to represent, if you please, is two ponies. And these are very proper and officious. So much so that I, I almost consider them version one and 2.0. There you are. <laughs> Oh. Miss Harshwini and, let's see, a Prim Hemline. Yes, yeah. that was a bit. Very prim and proper. The rules state we will have professionalism. <laughs> I can't uh, quite curl my mouth with the rigidity. Look at that. Professionalism. Professionalism. I'm being totally professional right now for the cameras. Hi. <laughs> so this is your version of professionalism. Oh, yes. Very much so. But these are the two ponies that really are sticklers for the rule. In fact, it's kind of funny, looking at them next to each other, you notice similar things like the earrings, the formal dress, the neck accentuations. The slight uh, facial features. <laughs> Almost the hairdo. Those the hairdo. judgmental eyes that are staring into me, questioning everything <laughs> I do. So, say, you are unworthy. <laughs> it's quite terrifying. So those are ponies that can, they can seem pretty un not very fun. So our next slide, we say goodbye. But there's another executive we have. This one's not quite so rigid, but he was very big on rules. Very big on following the order and being supportive, and also expressing himself through support. And that pony is Double Diamond. Ooh. This guy, I love this character. He was such a stickler for Starlight's rules when he was following the cult. And yet, and when she betrayed that trust, he was one of the first to swing too. He made a snap judgment, and of all things, he's the one who carried that staff and shattered the, the vault of cutie marks. He made a judgment snap call, and it was the right one. And ever since then, he's taken more of a leadership role, but he's still very supportive. So see, this is what I mean when I say there's no right or wrong personality type. There are different expressions of that. Our two of ponies were so stickler they didn't seem very fun. This guy's pretty easy going. He's still got the creepiest smile in the entire show. <laughs> <laughs> but now we know that was party to... favor. Party favor? Party favor. Remember when he was like, <laughs> he didn't listen. I did. <laughs> I don't know. I think they both. I think they're both competitors, but I think he uses it more. Unless I forget. Unless I'm remembering the season finale wrong. Pa oh, party favor like smiled and then like his eyes went listen. to the side. Oh yes. That, I, I, I have seen that meme. I have seen so many memes. So, so many times. But we move on to the entrepreneur. Entrepreneurial. Let's see here. Extroverted, sensing, thinking, per uh, perceiving, I believe. See, it's hard to keep it all straight sometimes. Now you forgot already. You just did it <laughs> about 10 minutes ago. 10 oh. minutes ago. A lot can happen in 10 minutes. A lot can happen. Yeah, yeah. Basically, I'm... I think there are 16 different personality types, all yes. different combos yes, there of are. just one or yeah. the other. So it's a lot to keep up here. And I guess you haven't noticed, there ain't a lot of space up here. My ego's taking like 95%. Awesomeness <laughs> <laughs> incarnate. Ego quill. Ego quill, yes, I like it. So the positive traits for the entrepreneur. Bold and sociable, sort of the opposite. This, Whereas the uh, executive might hold back and just support from the background, the entrepreneur is just going to be bold, step forward, very rational thinking, very practical in their viewpoints. But uh, maybe that can work against them. Maybe they're unwilling to take risks. They'll put themselves out there, but they won't necessarily make the bold step. Very perceptive and very direct. They'll get right to the point, which, we, as we transition to the negatives, that can also seem insensitive. Uh, you are stepping out. It's funny. Even though you're very rational and practical, you still might take risks just stepping out there. 
So you can be accident prone. But so focused on the practicality, so focused on this one task, you're not seeing the big picture. You're not looking around. And, it's, and also, you're just trying to get to the point right away. That, that directness means you are not going to mince words or waste time. You're just right there. And people sometimes feel very put off when you go right to it. You know, that's why we, we spend our time saying, hey, how you doing? Hi, good to meet you. Give me your wallet. <laughs> <laughs> Attack me, I appreciate that. <laughs> oh, you're that close. I know. <laughs> I'm striking there's, there's my risk. So for the entrepreneur, we have a pony, two ponies, in fact. Two ponies who are risk takers. They're focused on the moment. They get right to it. But the big picture is always beyond them. Those two ponies are... Oh, <laughs> oh boy. This, this is why these two work so well in Wonderful Academy. I love the fact that at first you think, oh, they're going to be rivals. No, they're friends. Oh, but they're pushing themselves in the wrong direction. Because neither one sees the big picture. They were so focused on that competition, on proving they were the top bolt and worthy of the flight leader status. Lightning Dust was arguably more focused and more driven. She took far greater risks and didn't care when she nearly hurt someone. Oh, that came back to bite her, though. I still maintain kicking her out at the end. Because everything I saw hints that she got kicked out. For one mistake, that seems like a, that seems like a mistake in itself. Really Maybe dangerous. wonder about the Wonderbolts. A oh, really dangerous mistake, mind you, but still. Still, now that the Wonderbolts have kicked out at least two members, I'm starting to say, okay, when do we get the Shadow Bolts return episode, eh? <laughs> yeah. Just leading the Shadow Bolts, that would be interesting. Very. Maybe with that bolt guy, too. All right. Now, I don't have a counter because, honestly, these two counter each other well. Rainbow's... Rainbow makes a lot of mistakes, 28 frames later, anybody? <laughs> but, she does, but she is driven, focused. Guys, uh, feel free to come in. Don't, don't be shy. Pull up a seat. Take it easy. Dr. Wolf, take a seat. Oh, I'm here standing because I've been sitting all morning. Uh, <laughs> oh, is there a doctor I, in the room? And I've right? actually <laughs> seen this panel before, and it's other intriguing, I must admit. I've got the doctor seal of approval. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so we now move on to ESFJ. The console. The console is, well, this is let's list the positive traits, because even I need to jumpstart my memory sometimes. Very strong, practical, sense of duty. Basically, the console is there to support, to get people welcome, to bring everyone together and have them feel comfortable in a situation to get the best uh, possibility. So very loyal, very sensitive, and very good at forming connections. They'll come up, they'll shake your hand. They're not impatient. They're willing to just go with the flow, draw you in, create a safe space for everyone. Now, but on the negative side, very worried about social status. So being perceived by the group is everything. So that can also lead to compromising one's beliefs or uh, views to try and fit with the group. You have to be on guard for that. That also makes them somewhat reluctant to innovate. I mean, what if you make a mistake and the group doesn't look highly upon you? A lot of times there's the temptation to play it very safe. And then once they start once you start criticizing them, oh well, they're they're gonna shut down. They're gonna feel like they failed everything, they've been rejected. It's awful. And sometimes they can even be too selfless, giving away uh, their time and energy so they have nothing left for themselves. And you gotta have just a little bit for yourself. Otherwise you're gonna burn out. So our pony example for the console. What more click thing is this one this one might surprise you. He's very eager to make you happy. He wants to make you smile, smile, smile. And he's voiced by a really awesome guy. That person is... Oh, Jesus Savage. This guy was very interested in proving he was a fantastic party pony. Especially to, ironically, the pony who inspired him to host parties. But what happened? Well, he basically ended up driving away the very pony he was trying to impress. Yeah, that's definitely yeah. whoops. He was trying, now this guy got a whole town behind him in one song. He won, he won everybody over. And he wasn't doing this with malice, it's just how his personality sometimes plays out. And he knows that he goes big, but he's always big and over top. Rainbow is the perfect subject for that. How would he do planning a party for Fluttershy? Oh, oh. Good luck. You are not going to have accordions, cannons, and uh, singing, stealing songs. No. Party howitzers. Stealing Pinkie Pie songs, if they were on YouTube, sir, you'd be shut down. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. 
So she's a wonderful guy, but he can sort he can undo himself by being too worried about what the group thinks. Next, we move on to ESFP, the entertainer. Oh, is the entertainer so much fun? They're positive traits. This is oh. you? No. Nope. Oh no, I am very much introverted. Don't let this charming personality fool you. I have spent years trying to work this thing up. <laughs> We've been proposing the idea of the roast of Silver Quill with my friends. You would learn things about me you, you would never want to look upon me again. <laughs> oh wait, no, I have to do this now. Hey. <laughs> that meme is dead ever since Hillary Clinton did it on the Ellen show. I don't even know what this is. I watch Super Sentai. This is, you know, Super Sentai. <laughs> I don't know what this is. What is this? Dab. It's called dabbing. 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 This is dabbing. <laughs> I'm too old to understand this. Okay. Look, entertainer, be bold and original. Don't do this. <laughs> okay, I like your thinking. Very practical, very observant. Great people skills, basically, they find joy in the group's entertainment. They are the extrovert. They take in the energy. People laughing fills them up, gets them going. They get funnier as they go along. I think a lot of stand-up comedians uh, thrive with this. But entertainment can come at a price. So we have the negatives. Very sensitivity. Basically, you want the group to have fun. You, get, you, have, you have fun when the group itself is enjoying things. So you're going to want to avoid conflict. Arguments drain a person. They just take it all away, shuts them down. So they're going to try to avoid conflict. And unfortunately, that also means that when they're trying to get everything going, if things hit a lull, they're going to shut down, just uh, oh, whatever. And then it's hard to get that energy back. Someone's got to get it. You've got to prompt the entertainer to entertain. Or they're going to jump in and try to do, start something themselves. Maybe not at the right time. And because of this, they can often seem unfocused. Good luck getting them to go through a task that doesn't really feature entertaining a large group. Oh, shh. Stories such as going through the Maya's Grace test. Yes, good, yes, it's very hard to test this group because they're like, I gotta fill in a bubble. That's can why, I use... That's why coloring book works. Yes, yeah, can I use colored pencils at least? I'm gonna <laughs> Christmas tree this. <laughs> oh, oh, there you go. The Myers-Briggs Christmas tree. Yes! <laughs> what light bulb you do says something about your personality. You know, that was good. Yes, I'm a genius! <laughs> but not really, because yeah. I did this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there's... Five now. points from Gryffindor. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, I probably end up Hufflepuff anyway. <laughs> oh. 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 Well, they didn't do anything wrong. Gryffindor. At least they didn't say Slytherin. <laughs> now, the entertainer hey, pony. I think this one's kind of obvious. Yeah. So, just, so, you know, I know you all think Twist isn't that great, Actually, I don't know that, but I'm assuming. And that's why I'm not using her. The real pony is Inky Pop. <laughs> so it is funny. It is funny. I've never forgotten why people were so frustrated with Twist. What the Twist? What the Twist? Oh, God, that's it. The one fan of Twist, Shyamalan. <laughs> What a marvelous pony, but good luck getting her to sit still. Remember, the greatest test of focus, the drive to make her reconnect with her friends, stare and watch paint dry. That, and that was the greatest challenge of all. I mean, she lost herself in that mad props that she could stay focused through that, because Pinky is hard to keep on track. But you notice that she loves when groups are happy. But the minute an argument breaks out, she's not doing too well with that. She gets uh, very, I think she gets very afraid of what everyone's doing. So Pinky, great party pony, great group planner, but you know what? Don't bring her in when you're planning a town meeting or a council or have to debate some point. She's there for the after party when you want everyone to like each other again. <laughs> don't don't okay, bring can, her in on emotional helpings. Can we get Pinkie Pie in the real world on November 9th? <laughs> <laughs> meltdown countdown to the election and I'm like we, if I can't find one I want to make one there you go because the world is going to explode <laughs> at least America will uh, that's what I just said about who gets elected we're screwed either way but we, so we need to at least have a laugh so why, why doesn't Comedy Central have a post-election day where they have like fresh new talents 
Make people laugh. Oh, you know it. South Park will come out with something. <laughs> well, you <laughs> guarantee it. Oh, uh, I will just go home and binge watch all Pink South Park, Park does it better. I approve this man's message. I approve that one. Pink Friday, November 9th. Oh, also, V for Vendetta today. Remember, remember the 50th. Remember. Oh, I wish I the gunpowder treason and plot. I see no reason for the gun why the gunpowder treason should ever be for God. Almost. Right. I get new slender points, right? Yes. So can I keep my pocket protector? No. <laughs> ah. All right, so we move on. We are now going with an introverted personality. ISTJ, the logistician. Which is hard for me to say, that distinction. I'm seeing a lot of words of these panels that don't really roll off the tongue. <laughs> like the quaternary thing yesterday? Who made that word? No, logistician. Logistician. Well, the positive traits of the logistician are very honest, very direct. Strong sense of duty will, will approach you directly. You don't really have to worry about uh, hidden motives or alterations. What you see is Right, what you get. And there's a great deal of trust that's there. Calm and practical, and because they're very straightforward and direct, but not necessarily blunt, this person can be a jack of all trades. They pick up a lot of talent along the way and recognize uh, how to apply those strengths. Unfortunately, because they're so, they're so practical, they're, they have some weaknesses. Because like being stubborn, insensitive, and by the book, they say, you know, this is how we do it, this is how I learned it, this is how we're going to do it. No, I don't want to hear a different way to do it. Innovation is discouraged, but maybe even a little scary. So, let's see, who could be a very honest pony, who, but is also stubborn as a mule? No offense. <laughs> <laughs> if, it's, if it's not Applejack, I'm going to flip a table. Second episode of is this another one? Thank you, everyone. I think so. I just said honest, and well, if she's got an Applejack, I'm going to flip the table over. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. They only tear. Who's a oh, silly pony? So There's a silly table pony, there. You're also honest, hardworking, very direct. Get up and flip it. <laughs> I said, no. I, if it's not Applejack. Oh. I, if it wasn't Applejack, ah, if it wasn't Applejack, who's also very simple, honest, and direct? Hmm. Spitfire is pretty blunt and to the point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she's not really big on innovation, but she's al but she's also been sort of duplicitous. Ooh, I get to use a big word. <laughs> <laughs> How would Raw Raw fit in? Like, do you think she might? Maybe? Yeah, she was living a double life for a good while. I think she's more, she takes more joy from the group. Whereas a logistician is introvert. Mm. Mm. So, introvert. Now, no, Applejack is very happy to get along. When I say introverted, I don't mean that you're terrified of people. There are different degrees. Some people are intensely introverted. They never want to deal with other people. <laughs> we'll get to her. But uh, some introverts are just sort of, I need like 10 minutes. Just run to the bathroom and clear my mind, or go outside and breathe the air. Do not breathe the air in the bathroom. No. <laughs> <laughs> and so that, that and so extroverts table. also can kind of like small groups, but they <laughs> like the group. Or some people love a massive filled hall. Again, there's sort of a gradient. Applejack can work long hours on the farm alone, and she's uh, she seems perfectly happy doing it. But she can also party with her entire family or the town and just be really friendly outgoing. She's in that sort of middle gradient. Now, we move on to ISTP, the virtuoso. It sounds really great, especially if you speak from the diaphragm, which I'm not sure if I'm doing. I'm not even sure if this is the diaphragm. Yes, yes, I can't yes, even yes. say diaphragm. I failed, I failed biology. <laughs> My diaphragm is up there. <laughs> and uh, let's see, the positive traits. Very optimistic and energetic. Basically, this person just knows what they want to do. They see the big picture. They look at it and they know how to get there. This grand view of what needs to be done, when to do it, and how to focus. So when things are going down, when you're implementing a plan and suddenly something has gone wrong, something didn't connect, and now the whole chain threatens to come loose. Well, this is a person who understands how to get from point A to point B and forge the new link and keep things going. And so, unfortunately, that always comes with some negativity, which I may have lost the slide for. Oh my. Oh no. <laughs> oh, there it is. Oh, and there it goes. <laughs> dear, dear me, did I, did I ruin this presentation? Have I doomed us all? No, 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 no. It's gone. Oh, I am undone. Oh, 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 o
right, let's just move this fella over here. The necessity is the mother of invention, so we're just going to break the illusion for a minute. But here's Big Macintosh. Look at this guy. He, all it takes is one yep or nope, and folks know where they stand with him. <laughs> he sees the big picture, he usually gets things done. He said, things are different now. Your sister's out saving Equestria. Well, he's at home at the farm, keeping things going, even when the red, Applejack's like 50 per, well, I'm going to say at least 40% of the workforce. Apple Bloom can do so much, Granny Smith can do so much, but it's really Applejack and Big Mac who run the farm physically. As we learned, Granny's the head of the farm. Ain't no question of that. So when Applejack goes away, Big Mac has a very difficult role. He's got to, he's got to keep things running. And you know what? The farm has never come under crisis while she's away. They've never missed a payment. There's been no uh, failed customers. This guy knows what's to do. Now he can be a little bored. You know, you just sort of be like, oh, I gotta do this again. So he he took, I loved it when he took part in the pony tones. Suddenly he's doing something totally unrelated to the farm, and he's just good, and he's got a great baritone. Mm -hmm. I wish they would do more of that with him. Indeed. I'd well, like that as well. Sister Boo is social. Well, that wasn't enough. It wasn't enough. and It'll never be enough. And that comes to the last point, risky behavior. He, he knew he wanted to make Apple Bloom happy. He knew he wanted to fix what was going on. Sorry, I pitched you a curve there. He knew what was going on, and so he took the steps, but it was a tremendous risk. In fact, his final charge as uh, Apple Orchard, basically he bowled over a lot of ponies. Very risky behavior. Orchard Blossom. Orchard Blossom. Cousin Orchard Blossom. There you go. And we're back. Look at him. Look at that star of a stallion. Uh, and he, he has he needs more lines. He, Actually, I find it. I find when you can you can say fifty words with just a yep or a no. That's yeah. pretty awesome. And he got I find it charming. One episode this season. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But I, oh well, that one, that was weird. Just see, he's yeah. Talking. What is he doing with his mouth? Yeah, like he just <laughs> talked <laughs> so much. It was awkward. Well, here's the reaction to that. Yeah. And then we find out he's he's quiet because can't talk. Sister, look up my Lego. <laughs> <laughs> wow, well, I made this dark. <laughs> Let's move on to the he just ISFJ, had to censor yourself the Defender. Too. Oh my God. The Great Defender. Now, these folks are about looking out for others. So we have very supportive. Very well. Basically, they want to see others succeed. They want to know that others will have the opportunity to succeed. And so they're going to do everything they can to support that. Do everything they can to be there for the team. Meaning that they're very reliable and patient. You know they'll be there and you know they can put up with a lot of guff. They'll even, maybe they'll even support you when you're making the wrong choice. That's what they do. And they'll do so with enthusiasm. Even if they voice hesitation or say, hey, I'm not sure if you want to do this, they'll still say, okay, you're going forward for it, I'm there. What do you need? And therefore, they're some of the most loyal people you can expect. But on the negative side, well, they, because they're investing a lot of themselves in your success, they're... If the things don't work through, they're going to take it very hard. Maybe they'll think it's something I didn't do. What if I'd worked harder? Would you have succeeded? They're taking a lot on themselves. But because they're so supportive, they won't express that. They're going to internalize it, which is why introverts. And that can be very toxic or hurtful. And so if you don't address those issues, get it out in the open, things can percolate. Uh, basically, because they're very supportive, they don't, changing courses means sometimes diverting their support. That's going to be hard. And again, it might be a little too altruistic. It might be too worried about the other person and not enough about themselves. You got it. And if anyone was paying attention. Now, of all the, of all the defenders who took things personally, I know uh, there's two. So first we have the Princess Luna. She was a very strong defender. She's been there for a lot of ponies in episodes. Of all the princesses, we've seen her step forward the most and lead from the front. Crusaders are having a hard time. She's there for them. Ponies are in danger from dreams. She puts herself on the front line and in harm's way. Granted, she caused the problem, but at least she takes ownership of that. But she also <clears> takes <throat> things very personally. That's why she had the descent into Nightmare Moon. People aren't enjoying the night I've provided, that, that I care, that I give to them. How could they? And because she didn't express it, it all boiled up and built inside her until we had Nightmare Moon. Who knows that night? 
Exactly. And then a thousand years time out. <laughs> if your kids ever complain about getting sent to your room, well, think on Luna. But we have another defender as well. And this little guy. Spikes. Oh, Spikes. 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 Have you ever seen... Hey, Fox. Hey, Wait, right? Of course. Please come on in. Have a seat wherever. No popsicles, right? No popsicles. I get, I'm still not oh. doing the popsicle thing. I'm sorry. <laughs> I love popsicles, though. Princess Luna gave me cake in exchange for no more kidnappings. <laughs> That'll last a week, I promise. Yeah, okay, half right a week. Back. Tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Need more water. Now everybody feels the cake. But Spike is very supportive of Twilight in particular. He still looks out for the other ponies. If Applejack needs a lighter for the Apple Family Reunion, she'll just grab Spike and stick his head back. That was freaky. <laughs> Rarity needs uh, someone... Anything? Aaron, anything, everything, including going into a dark cave. And as someone said, a tank question. And a tank question. Yeah, that's, that's one kind of support when you're willing to be stuck with a needle for someone else. But he commented afterward he couldn't feel it. Yeah. So, so is there, is, so if, if nothing is lost, has he given anything? If you're willing to let someone come at you with a sharp point, I don't care if you don't feel Good it. Good point. Good point. I'm like, okay, you're, you're, you're going to put those away from my eyes, right? Plus, there is a certain dignity that is sacrificed when you become someone else's pin cushion. I would know. <laughs> don't ask. Perfect time to walk in. All right. But now we move on from the Defender to ISFP, the Adventurer. The Adventurer. Which doesn't that name just conjure a grand? I'm thinking dare and do already. <laughs> Which means you might have trouble with bridges. <laughs> they tend to drop out from under you. <laughs> dare and do has sort of a Murph Nays law on rope bridges. They'll snap. Doesn't matter if they're newly built, perfectly placed, they'll snap. Yes. I got confused. I'm from Oregon. We have a home health care place called Bridges. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> so Don't, I okay. got really Don't. concerned. Oh no, dare and do. Literally walks across a rope bridge. Although, with our modern healthcare system, she might have trouble too. <laughs> it's just, either way, it's funny. Oh, yes. The bridge could be five so, on the positive traits for the adventurer, you can know, be very charming, very sensitive to others, very passionate. You want to see the world, to know, to understand. They're driven, and of course, but they're also aware of who is in the world. And so they're not going to uh, step on them just to get what they want. Which is, but also have a very strong artistic personality. I think I just gave away the phony personality here. But let's talk about negatives. Negatory. Fiercely independent, which means you can't really tell what they're going to do. It's hard to, it's hard to know. There's going to be mood swings or bold actions. Maybe they'll go ten steps ahead when they only need to go three. And then, you, then there's a scramble. And of course, that leads to stress. And they don't handle the stress well. This is a group that wants to be artistic. That's an expression of joy. Stress can be a blocker to that. And because they feel so stressed, because they've taken this bold step and maybe suffered rejection, it's really hard to predict their self-esteem. And the pony I chose for this is actually, well, actually artistic. I might have hinted rarity, but I've actually got a different pony lined up. Of all things, Braeburn. Braeburn? His adventure, he went forth to Appaloosa at the edge of the world. At the edge of pony civilization, at least. Starting something new. Now, he cares very much for others. The minute he had the opportunity to talk to the buffalo, he didn't push back. He didn't say, no, this is our land. He wanted to hear what they had to say. Too bad he, uh, too bad his, his cousin was on hand. Stubborn cousin. Stubborn cousin. It's the, only, it's the only episode where I felt like the main six made the situation worse, start to finish. So, Brainburn, I think, actually is a very passionate... Now, his, arti his artistic style, it's... You might think, well, what, he doesn't paint, he doesn't sculpt. He makes an orchard, and he takes great pride in it. The town is his art. And he feels a great passion and love for it. But he has some fluctuating self-esteem, and as we learned more recently, He's not the most reliable of sorts. That's why uh, Appaloosa's Most Wanted was something of a letdown, seeing how bad he got. Couldn't keep his eye on three fillies. Couldn't keep his eye on three fillies, though it is the cutie mark crusaders. Let's cut him some slack there. 
And well, hey, we all could use some sleep. I'm seeing folks who are looking a little, little weary today. <laughs> but we move on to INTV, the logician, not logistician, the logician. See, this is why we have a lot of words that sound a lot alike and make me sound stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, English language. You don't need words for that. Oh, okay. I try to I try to switch over to Spanish, but I only learn the curse words. <laughs> hey, bye. Hey. Only only when I'm really mad at someone in Spanish, okay. and even then, that's just going to make the situation worse. Especially if you don't know really? Spanish. Yes. Yeah, well, then, then, then you can just say things to them that. That will just, you can be really offensive. Hey, call those anos tienes. How many asses do you have? <laughs> you could say anything in German with a loud answer. voice and it would sound like oh. you're angry and cursing. Oh, German. Oh, German. <laughs> German. German. The language that gave us most of our lullabies. And yet, it does, if spoken with enough force, it sounds terrifying. <laughs> I'm just saying, I love you. And it just sounds like, I'm going to destroy you. You can die. You can <laughs> but on the positive streets of a logician who may or may not be German, Spanish, English, or otherwise. <laughs> These persons have no, no boundary. The logician is, of course, very intellectually driven. Great analytics, th abstract thinkers take, can take the complex and make it simple, can express an idea to others. Great folks. Great, for, great open minded, really not going to close themselves off to anything. They'll, they'll want to hear your opinion. They want the data. Give me the input. Data, data, data. I cannot make bricks without clay. Okay, who, who here got that reference? Less than I'd like. Wait, Marcus, what the hey man? Thank you, too. I appreciate that. I understand what we you mean by it. We saw that Sherlock Holmes! Oh! I mean, I understand the analogy, but... Yes. Was it? Ah! But, of course, being driven by pure logic, they're going to hit some road bumps, too. That leads to our negatives. Because when you're, again, there's that introvert. Thought is very critical to an introverted personality. They want to reflect. You can almost imagine a symphony of light inside their heads. They might look kind of dull on the outside, but there's a lot going on up here. So that leads to being kind of withdrawn. And because they don't, they're focused inward, they're not really connected with other people. They might not be aware of what the impact their words are saying. Sherlock, very logical guy, complete jerk. <laughs> he doesn't even realize. Uh, I watched the BBC Sherlock, and he's like, what, not good? And he just looks at Watson like, what, what did I just do? Not good. Sherlock is awesome. Oh. So again, Doctor Strange come Sherlock. Oh. Yeah. No spoilers. It's... No, I haven't seen it. Well, you should. No, no the, the funny thing is that because you're intellectual, you're pro you might not be focused on the moment. You might be pondering a problem from the yesterday, so you're not focusing. Kind of absent-minded, not in the here and now. You're always off somewhere else. And because they can analyze everything to a fault, guess what? They're gonna second guess themselves like no one's business. Yeah. Now I know you might be thinking Twilight for this, but no. I'm thinking you. <laughs> I'm thinking me. He's definitely me. Actually. He was stroking his own ego when he was saying all the positives. <laughs> all the positives. Oh, yes. Oh, I'm so intelligent. <laughs> no, I am not an INTP. In fact, but my favorite pony is. Oh. Now, let, let's be good. She's very intelligent. She knows, she knows how to take care of almost every animal in the world, it seems. She's able to think things through, plan in advance. Uh, she know, she's very bright, but she second-guesses herself constantly, and is exceptionally withdrawn. And while, my, and while she's very sensitive to when she's made a mistake, she might make an error in the moment, not really connecting with another person. She assumes, in fact, that she's hurt someone by default. She's kind of gone with that as a defense measure, because she can't read the room. I see a hand. I'm sorry, animals? Animals. Animals. They really speak to animals. Well, that's the fine thing. Introverts actually have an easier time connecting with animals. I'm introverted, I love dogs. Yeah. I see a dog, I'm like, oh, I want a pet. Oh, it's, bite, it's trying to bite at me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really sure why animals appeal, can appeal in that way, but I think because animals don't ask you to engage in conversation, it's weird. 
when you talk with someone, you're you're trying to focus on what they're saying, but you're also trying to focus on their tone, their body language, the surrounding sounds. It's overwhelming for an introverted soul. That's why Fluttershy tends to shut down in social situations. There's too much at once. Who here went to a haunted house this uh, past Halloween? Well, ooh, man, the haunted house industry is in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> My experience was that they love to bombard you with sound. They shut off the lights. Funnel and smoke, loud noises, clanking chains, screaming, thunder, all this stuff is meant to overwhelm your senses, and that's why Fluttershy would, would just shut down. Bombardment! Bombardment. Now, to be honest, side note is I think the scariest haunted houses are the ones that deny you information. You're in the dark, you hear one thing, and you have no idea why. Good. Let that mind go for that. So while Fluttershy is very absent-minded, remember when Angel had to chuck a carrot at her head because she didn't see smoke? <laughs> Which angel? Yeah. How many angels are there? There's only uh, one. My boyfriend has a theory that there is more than one. And yet we've angel. proven that's not the case because Fluttershy is too smart to actually mistake a bunny for an angel. I don't know. I've, I've, I've seen one consistent angel who's kind of a grump. But, uh, interesting theory. I'm sure he has many a cousin or brother and sister. That rabbit yeah. But if they're all, they all that much temperament, why have they conquered Ponyville? <laughs> oh my god. But, so they're they're waiting for all of Equestria. Oh, well that, oh, but that was Applejack scaring them all, poor things. Oh, yeah. And so Fluttershy, while she might not always seem like purely intellectual, she is a very intelligent but very low confidence pony. Oh, yeah. We move on to Zakamanda. Come on, ENTJs. This is the one you want in a crisis this is the one who can see the big picture of the organization, their positive traits, including very efficient and energetic. You Ooh. want to follow this person, they will lead you into battle. Bye, bye. Bye, bye Celestia, I'd follow him in Tartarus. Or Tartar I'm Sauce, or whatever you call it. <laughs> <laughs> very, very confident, very strong will. This is a character who will not show doubt in front of others. And as such, they are drawn to that confidence, a certain charisma, so they can affect their way. But there's no, there's no such thing as the perfect commander. Sorry, Optimus Prime. <laughs> so on the negative side, very stubborn and dominant. They know they're in charge, and they don't like the idea that someone might talk back or second guess them. I will not have my authority undermined. Uh, Why well, <laughs> shouldn't I? How is my Cobra currency not making Actually, any this money? is this is the uh, personality type I would give to his wife, who is very. No, this is the one I got. Really? You yeah. got this. Oh, we have confirmation. Frieza. <laughs> yes, if we're going to anime standards, Frieza does have the confidence, but also the arrogance. Yeah. And everyone followed this tyrant, maybe even sacrificed a little bit of their own morality in the process. Cool. Such yeah. heroic yeah. nonsense. Yeah. And, yeah, that was a... You killed the whole Saiyan race. You, got, you killed the god mods of the universe. <laughs> the Russian Dragon Ball Super. Those guys... Good. Why do, do not tell me anything? I, uh, I'm waiting for the dub. Okay, there's a lot of screaming. <laughs> <laughs> Dragon Ball, screaming, water, wet. <laughs> but basically, if they don't have a sense of empathy, if they don't, if they are so focused on themselves, there it is a coldness and a ruthlessness. You can make the tough calls, but sometimes you're not conflicted enough about making the tough calls. So the point for this has made drastic changes in her personality. Oh, we can hit the button. It is my command, hit the button. We will press the button when we will talk about the starlight glimmer. Oh. We are going with, we are going with the old hairstyle because I didn't have the mohawk. No. The curl. Oh, well, also because that's awful. The mohawk thing. Oh. Honestly, I'm looking at this hairstyle again, I now realize how ugly it looks on her. Uh, it is kind of funny. It was how we first knew her, but now I've gotten used to the curl. Yeah. Although, I wonder if it's better to look again. Although, I have, it, it, everyone was afraid Starling would become an alicorn. No. no. If she ever ascends, I, if she ever ascends, I think it requires a new hairstyle made. I'm thinking the princess of afros. <laughs> Did she do a number? I mean, she led a whole town. She converted them to her way of thinking, and they were all for it. They sacrificed so much. And yet, when she was exposed, when suddenly a rogue element challenged her, you saw just how cold and manipulative she could be. This was a character who was playing for keeps. Now, 
here we are at the end of the season. She has had the chance to command more. She's doubted herself. She's afraid of what she was. But the ability to command, to take the lead and guide others, to step forward into scary situations, she inspires that. And yeah, she can still make really hard calls. The finale required her to make some pretty tough decisions. Oh, yeah. But she was, and I, I realize not everyone has seen the finale, so I don't want to give anything away. But, but again, hard choices. Dragon Ball screaming, starlight choices. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like Wikipedia for everything. Yeah, yeah let's go with that. Why not? Let's edit that. My phone. No, no. Edit. What's this edit? I, my friends have encouraged me just post the dang panels. Don't try to edit and make it all tidy. Just do it and sound like a goof. Yeah. <laughs> start from doing, the beginning, end it at the end, and head. just exactly. upload it. <laughs> but, so, Starlight is a, can be a great commander, it's just the choices she makes. And so we move on to ENTP, the debater. This is the person who wants to ask you questions. Lots of questions. May drive you nuts. Admit the questions. Because they are interested in seeing something from all sides. They want knowledge. They want to explore an idea. They want to approach it from every angle, and you can't do that just from yourself. We are locked in by our own perception of the world. We have blinders. So, hashing it out with someone else is a great way. In fact, these folks will even become the devil's advocate. They might take a position opposite what they believe, just so they can explore an issue, challenge the conceptions. But the nice thing is that if they're really good at it, you never get the sense they're being hostile. They don't pepper their dialogue with insults or condescension. They recognize, I want to talk to you. They invite, there's that charisma and energy once again. The charms that extroverts can pour on to bring people out of their shells. I, I do want to make it clear, I don't, I don't hold the view that introverts and extroverts can't work, alone, work together and be friends. Some of my best friends are very extroverted. I'm introverted. It's really awkward. <laughs> but they're good friends. There's a government excluded. Shaw. Sure. <laughs> yeah, come on, though. But for every strength, there is a weakness. So we, because if you don't cultivate that empathy, if you don't really work on making sure people know you just want to ask questions for the reality of it, it might seem like you're just being an insensitive jerk. Uh, just starting an argument to argue, to get that energetic rush that some people find intoxicating when they hash it out and they don't care if they've made an enemy by the end. They got their thrill. And so they don't really care if they're insensitive or intolerant of views. They might instantly try to just disgrace you in a conversation. Good luck having a follow-up, though. Good luck. You, you, you just announce someone and you expect them to reply? Uh, no. They might just give you the double finger and walk off. <laughs> Good job. Yeah. Maybe they'll give you the silent treatment. And because, and because you're not paying attention to how they might be feeling, you might not be able to focus on one conversation. Oh, there's this one guy on YouTube, he, he was holding the base, but he was having lunch while he was talking to people on the phone. He had like a Bluetooth, and he was just popping chicken in his mouth, and he didn't even hear the question because he was too busy. He was like, you jerk, put the food down and offer this person the respect an individual is owed. I'm not plugging his name because I don't believe people like that should be promoted. They serve as vague examples of how not to do things. So. The baiter needs to engage a person directly and let them know, I see you as an individual, I'm not just doing this to bolster my own ego. <clears throat> but who is the debater? Who is going to take a position seeking knowledge, seeking to understand the universe? Why? I pay the doctor. What? Or, I'm sorry, he's now Time Turner. Great, we're turning stallions. <laughs> <laughs> this guy was so passionate about understanding the world, even applying mathematical equations to uh, bowling, which a particularly traumatic experience, which from what I've heard, that traumatic experience was bowling. <laughs> it just left him bowled over. <laughs> he felt like a complete pinhead. <laughs> his, his, his life was in the gutter. Oh, yes. well, that's a One more pun. Go, One on. more pun. But I have more to spare. This would also come up in the Rose to Silver Quill. We hate his puns. <laughs> <laughs> he never so stops. That's right. They're, they're just certain But like, but like you said it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I enjoyed just that brief appearance in Slice of Life was fantastic for this guy. He did a great job of just wanting to know the world without the use of magic. There are things magic can't explain. 
arguably, you could say, oh, it's magic. But he'd want to know, why is it magic? How does the magic work? What's in the box? We had this box go. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I never could figure <laughs> out what, how they can unite. That question is, I've had that in my mind ever since Halloween. I just, I want a new episode, please. Of what? Uh, Helsing Abridged. Yes! Oh. <laughs> Six is on. Uh, well, we're, we're hoping. We're hoping. They they were a little late last year. I'm confident they'll show again. But that's the Doctor or Time Turner in a nutshell. I'm used to calling him Doctor Hoops. I know they can't. I can't stop yeah. either. But uh, we move on to ENFJ, the protagonist, mm. or as they say, you go bridge protagonist. <laughs> <laughs> I am coming for you. <laughs> I'm slipping into darts for some reason. <laughs> so, protagonists are champions, they're heroes. Their positivity is for the world to see. Because they're very tolerant, reliable, they are the ones who step forward into leadership role right away. And they step up and people respect them because they show respect in turn. They're very take charge, and you can count on that. But you can also count on them to make some mistakes. Maybe they're a little too idealistic. Maybe they're not seeing the reality of the situation, or they can't accept that, you know, you aim for the stars, but you're never going to hit them. This is me. <laughs> Maybe they can be too selfless or too sensitive. They might fold under the pressure of making a really hard choice. Because they want, you know, the ideal is that everyone is happy at the end. What do, you, what do you do when you present with a challenge where one person is going to be unhappy no matter what? And unfortunately, that is many of the choices life throws at us. So they're going to have a hard time. So what pony could represent the protagonist? Well, it's not actually one of the show's main protagonists. Instead, it's Tree Hugger. Oh. Yeah. yeah! Good vibes, man. Good vibes. I got this great stuff. I'm high all the time. Oh, dear. Uh, this is the hard part of covering 16 personality types. There's a lot to go. So basically, Tree Hugger, she's the head of the equestrian preservation of, of animals. She makes a lot of good choices. She wants everyone to be happy. But she's really overwhelmed when things uh, aren't going their way. I don't know if she's ever had to face a really hard choice where she left one party unhappy. She believes that everyone can get in the groove and share the chakras. I have to align my chakras before I can hug you from a place of authenticity. Yeah, she still holds the belief that everyone can just get along, but they just need a minute. Sometimes you just gotta hug a guy and say, I don't like it, but okay. This is for the greater good. Great. Or the great. <laughs> so, but unfortunately, I need to I need to pick up the pace here. So let's move on to the ENFP, the campaigner. <laughs> on the positive traits of the campaigner, they're very interested in the world. But they're also they're also just good at connecting with people, being out there, taking things easy, connecting with folks. Uh, and unlike others who are very logical or task oriented, they can just chill. They can chill and draw you into the conversation. They're great campaigners because they know how to connect with people and strike the mood. Goodness knows, I'm sure both political parties have been trying to find people like this. <laughs> I, think they, I think they've been failing. But. but on the negative side, because there's always a downside, they are not necessarily practical. And when you're trying to connect with people, good lord, herding cats ain't even half of it. And come on in. No, no worries. You're welcome. Uh, they, they have a hard time, because they want to connect with people on an individual level, on a personal level, they're going to have a hard time following procedure or protocol. Because often that doesn't let them connect with people. People don't follow protocols. Uh, and as such, because they're trying to connect on a emotional level, they're going to adopt the stress. They're going to uh, pretty much take on an emotional burden. And so they're going to get pretty frazzled. At the end of a campaign trail, people start to turn nasty. So, what pony could represent this view? Well, honestly, it's one who ha has made several strides in her own campaign. Rarity has connected with many ponies as a savvy business pony, has connected and made three businesses. She was willing to hire tasks, but good lord, if she has a bad day, you're going to hear about it. The fact she has that on standby. Yes. <laughs> How much does she spend a month on ice cream? Uh, it's kind of like Optimus Prime's trailer from G1. It just comes from on the screen. You don't know where it's been. <laughs> it's like, oh, all right. You don't question. You don't question the drama. Where does that go? But trees. Yeah, you never know. But okay, I don't know if there's a couch-related emergency. I wouldn't take that line down. But very optimistic. Thank you. 
very well done. Uh, Rarity is great at connecting with others, with getting things across, but she can sometimes give a little too much, invest too much in the emotional connection, and then when they're rejected, it hurts her. When she's overwhelmed, she starts to have a meltdown. She's found a way to vent, but it's through a very loud and dramatic way. <laughs> Four of you one? Lot, well, lots of folks. She's but, my favorite one. There you go. This is whining. Now, now we're going to, you, you've all want to know what, yes. I, what am I? What am I, craziness? Well, I am an INTJ, the architect. Is it the next one? Yes, it is. Yes. <laughs> so let us talk about our positives, please. <laughs> Quick, imaginative, strategic mind. Well, two out of three ain't bad. What indeed? What did you guess? High self confidence. <laughs> yeah, well, like I said, high self confidence in certain situations. Being introverted, you're, when you're in your element, you can be king of the world. Take them out of their elements, like, oh god, what do I do? <laughs> Independent and decisive, depend, again, very situational based. Again, ask my friends. <laughs> but cool. makes, can make decisions, can study the situation. Hard working to determine. Okay, I am going to toot my own horn. I posted a 40 minute video this past Monday. One minute of video is one hour of preparation and editing. Work. <laughs> I've seen that. Yeah, that was a good yeah, video. That was really good. good job on that. Thank you, but but you shouldn't see, you should have seen me the week before. What's a social life? <laughs> 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 And we're just gonna we're just gonna skip the negatives. But no, we're not gonna skip the negatives. I gotta be honest. Honest, honest fellow. So my, on the negative side of the INTJ, yeah, we can be free for ourselves. <laughs> oh, oh, it's coming. Because I find this just delightful. Oh boy, I find this just delightful. But yes, being good at something can often mean you think too highly of yourself. You become arrogant, too full of yourself. You have to keep that ego in check. No, never, never, ever, ever. Keep it judgmental. Really? No, you and judgmental and, oh my, overly analytical. <laughs> you I, don't I don't know where say. they're getting that. Where do we begin? Where do we begin? Yeah. <laughs> Ask me about Princess Caden sometime. I'll go on for an hour. Hey, what do you think of Princess Caden? Oh. Yep. I'll give him a rose boy then. He thinks he takes things seriously. I can end it. <laughs> I love to see that man. There you go. But, yes, there is a fourth trait, and I find this so delightful because it ties into one of my favorite characters. Blue <laughs> judging lots going on up here maybe not picking up on social cues and not sure how to follow through I you may think oh Silver's just making fun of Flash again <laughs> I actually think this would be a great episode if Flash tried to form a connection and Twilight is just oblivious how do you connect with her how do you get her to take note and stop well you better have a very good book that's why Timber Spruce was actually I think better in Equestria Girls 4 because he wow. engaged her on trivia on knowledge and that's how they formed a connection. Hello. I'm so sorry. I need your pool. She needs my. She wants my money. <laughs> Did you leave the pool on your own? Money is the root of all evil. Uh, yeah. 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 Hey, if you want to oh, go there, are you there, talking about your sword? Yes, I am. Okay, so what is the Perfectly honest, we're expecting uh, for you to pop your own picture up there. <laughs> <laughs> no one now, apparently. I haven't done seen the poor boy in a while. I have. But we have one last person I type, and this one you may not have heard of if you haven't read the comics. INFJ, the advocate. This is the person who believes in you when you don't believe in yourself. Please. Don't believe in you. Creative and insightful, very inspiring. Well, it's very anime reference. Cares about everyone, wants everyone to be their best, might actually believe in you more than you believe in yourself. That's us. That's Silver Quill. I am Dr. Wolf. Come on in. We're just going to gotta wrap this up. Uh, I'm afraid I won't have time for QA, but our very next panel is myself and Dr. Wolf doing a QA. It's sort of a mega panel. What time was that again? Right now.
right after right now. I'm oh, here. literally right after this. Yeah, literally right after this. Like, oh. technically right now. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just a little past my time. So let's get on to the negatives. The advocate believes in someone so much might not actually believe in reality. Very sensitive, very private in their views, very perfectionist, and when you believe so much in another person, you might pour all that energy out and you might just collapse upon yourself. Uh, I know that feeling. And it could, be, it could be rough. It could be mm -hmm. rough. Actually, I may have spoken too soon, but for INFJ, the advocate, the pony of representation, one more, is actually, I've actually gotten, I've got yeah. mixed up in my panels. It's Celestia. She believes in others. She elevates them. She takes them to be their best selves, but she has spent a thousand years pouring her energy into protecting others. I said this was the comic I got mixed up. Obviously, this is not a comic character. She gets captured a lot in both. <laughs> <laughs> but Celestia really wants everyone to be their best selves. She tries to create the environment for that. But she puts it, she has very little time and maybe even energy for herself. I've often wondered if she ever gives herself a chance to be emotional about the difficulties. A thousand years without her sister. That's why season four premiere really hit home. Yeah. But I got a little bit ahead of myself. I believe we actually have one more slide, so let's jump because I am going over time. Apologies, Doctor. The mediator. Oh. But the mediator. <laughs> let's talk mediator positivity. Very idealistic. Very, very much believing in uh, the, your best self. Also, bit like the bit like the advocate. The mediator is going to try and bring out that best self on a personal level, one-on-one -on -one engagement. And they uh, basically want everyone just to get along, to be uh, their best selves in a harmonious environment, and can come up with some pretty interesting ways to do that. Unfortunately, they can also come across as a little idealistic, naive, in fact. You hit them with the hard facts and they don't want to hear it, because the hard facts don't match the ideal they're chasing. They're going to push through. Now, to be honest, sometimes you do have to press on despite the facts. <clears throat> sometimes you, you make that gamble. But then, you also are taking this success very personally, and it may not work in your favor. It may actually be quite awful. Sometimes you may believe in others past the point of reality. And to represent this, I chose a pony from the comics. This is Radiant Hope. I don't know how many people know this character. She, there we go. This was Sombra's best friend growing up. His only friend. And when everyone else dismissed him as a tyrant, she never gave up on him. <laughs> but in doing so, within this comic arc, which drew a lot of criticism, she in essence sided with him against Equestria, and actually managed to reach him in ways no one else could. But she's come under very harsh criticism for some very real mistakes. And she was exceptionally naive. So much so that her naivete put everyone at risk. And I like, I like this character. I find her fascinating. I want to do a whole video on her. Just because of what she represents for how people react to grief, to loss, to difficulty. But I have, I have gone over time. Uh, that's what happens when you try to talk to 16 different personalities. But if you go to 16personalities.com, you might be able to research more about each one, even take the Myers-Briggs test and see what personality you might be. I find it's very helpful in figuring yourself out and what you like, dislike, what works. I need to so, retake that. So thank you for, for hearing this, but I'm going to welcome up Dr. Wolf now. And we're just going to talk about the reviewing or personality types in general.